diagram language, also known as LAD, from the English Ladder Diagram, or simply KOP, from the German Contacts Plan. It is one of the most used graphic languages to program a PLC, which helps us to automate and control different industrial processes. Here is a small example, which consists of the following parts and elements. The two vertical lines at the ends would physically represent the energized lines, for example, 24 volts and 0 volts. Only this is done on a computer. Each horizontal line represents a rung on the diagram. The elements enclosed in red represent the conditions, which can be physical input elements such as buttons, switches, sensors, etc. Or they also represent internal variables such as marks or memories. The elements enclosed in purple represent the actions, which can be physical output elements such as motors, gauges, valves, etc. Or they also represent internal variables such as marks or memories. In a PLC, Programmable Logic Controller, in general, the physical elements that are the external inputs are connected from the top, these can be connected directly or through an expander or converter module if necessary. The external outputs are connected through the bottom of the PLC, these can be connected directly to the physical elements or through modules or security keys. In some logic controllers, it can be programmed directly using the front panel, but in the vast majority specific software is used on a computer and then the diagram is uploaded to the PLC. Reading a ladder diagram is done from left to right and from top to bottom. The types of input signals to a PLC can be digital signals or analog signals, the same occurs with the outputs. It should be clarified that not all PLCs accept analog signals, so in some cases converter modules must be used. This video will only explain about the elements that use digital signals which allow us to perform logical operations with bits. Normally open contact, it is activated when there is a logical one in the element it represents. It can be a physical input or an internal variable. Normally closed contact, its function is similar to the normally open contact, with the only difference that it is activated when there is a logical zero in the element it represents. Normally open coil, it is activated when the logical combination at its input, left, results in a logical one. It usually represents an output element or internal variable. Normally closed coil, its function is similar to the normally open coil, with the only difference that it is activated when there is a logic zero, on the left side. Set and reset coils, they normally work together since one depends on the other. Labels are always used in a ladder diagram to help us identify the elements. This table shows two examples of label types, this will depend on the software we use to make the diagram. On the right side, two diagrams are shown that fulfill the same function, the only difference is that they have different labels, these labels are the ones that the program places by default, but they can be customized or changed. It should be noted that the numbers that accompany the labels indicate the address of the element. To better understand all this, let's see some examples with logical sentences or propositions. The sentence might say, if physical input A turns on, then Y turns on. This could be represented in the latter diagram with a normally open contact A and A Y coil, and would be interpreted as follows, if contact A receives a logic one, then this contact changes state, that is, it closes, and thus can activate coil Y. Another sentence might say, if physical input A turns on, then Y turns off. This could be represented on the ladder diagram with a normally closed to contact and AY coil, and would be interpreted as follows. If contact A receives a logical one, then this contact changes state, that is, it opens, and thus can deactivate coil Y since it was initially activated because contact A is normally closed. To reactivate the Y coil, it would only be enough to deactivate the physical input, thus contact A would return to its default state, which is normally closed. Another proposition would be the following, if the physical inputs A and B are activated, then Y is activated. This could be represented in the ladder diagram with two normally open contacts A and B connected in series and A Y coil, and would be interpreted as follows, if contact A and B receive a logic one, then these contacts change state, that is, they close, 
and thus they can activate the Y coil. Another proposition would be the following. If the physical inputs A or B are activated, then Y is activated. This could be represented in the latter diagram with two normally open contacts A and B connected in parallel and A Y coil, and would be interpreted as follows. If contact A receives a logic 1, then this contact changes state, it is that is, it closes, and thus it can activate coil Y. Or if contact B receives a logic 1, then this contact changes state, that is, it closes, and thus it can also activate coil Y. These two diagrams represent logic gates, the first represents the AND gate and the second the OR gate. Let's see some simple examples. Example 1, make the ladder diagram to turn on a light bulb when you press a button, and turn it off if you stop pressing the button. The ladder diagram could be made in several ways, this will depend on how the physical inputs are considered. Let's see the first way, if the button is considered as normally open. Here the PLC is shown, where the normally open button is connected on one side to 24 volts and on the other to the PLC input I2. The bulb is connected to the Q1 output of the PLC. It should be clarified that the Q1 output only acts as an electrical switch, similar to a relay, opening or closing the bulb circuit. To better understand, I am going to use the button symbol as this way you can see that it is normally open. This would be the ladder diagram for this example, since it meets the condition of this sentence that says, if the physical input A is activated, then Y is activated, for the example, input A is the button. The button is connected to input I2, so in the ladder diagram it is represented by a contact labeled I2. The coil labeled Q1 represents the physical output where the bulb is connected. The operation is as follows. When powering up the PLC or starting the simulation, the left vertical line of the ladder diagram is activated waiting for the conditions of the physical input, which for this example is the normally open push button. When the button is pressed, it closes the circuit by sending a high voltage level to the PLC input, which translates into a logic one that reaches contact I2, activating it, then the horizontal line is energized, activating coil Q1, Immediately this coil sends a signal to activate or close the Q1 output, thus making the light bulb turn on. The bulb will stay on as long as the button is pressed. If the button is released, it opens the circuit sending a low voltage level to the PLC, which translates into a logical zero that reaches contact I2, causing it to return to its default state, which is normally open. Then the horizontal line is de-energized, deactivating the Q1 coil. This coil immediately sends a signal to deactivate or open the Q1 output, thus causing the bulb circuit to open and turn off. All this process is done instantly, we do not perceive the time it takes to turn on the light bulb when the button is pressed. Now let's see the second way, if the button is considered as normally closed. The latter diagram would be this. The operation is as follows. When powering up the PLC or starting the simulation, the button immediately sends a high voltage level to the PLC input I2, which is translated as a logic 1. What this logical 1 does is change the state of contact I2, that is, it will deactivate or open it, so coil Q1 will not be activated yet. Note that all this happens when the PLC is energized without having manipulated any input, that is, these would be the initial conditions of the entire process. Now, by pressing the button, it opens the circuit by sending a low voltage level to the PLC input I2, which is translated as a logical zero, which makes the I2 contact return to its default state, which is normally closed, that is to say, it is going to activate or close, in this way the horizontal line is energized and the Q1 coil is activated. This coil immediately sends a signal to activate or close the Q1 output, thus making the light bulb turn on. The bulb will stay on as long as the button is pressed. All this process complies with this phrase that says, if the physical input A is deactivated, then Y is activated. If we stop pressing the button, it closes the circuit by sending a high level of voltage to the PLC input, which translates into a logical one that reaches contact I2, making it change state, that is, it is going to deactivate or open. Then the Q1 coil is also deactivated, this coil immediately sends a signal to deactivate or open the Q1 output, thus causing the bulb circuit to open and turn off. 
As I had already said, this whole process is done instantly, we do not perceive the time it takes to turn on the light bulb when the button is pressed. Now let's see a second example, and it tells us, make the ladder diagram to turn on a light bulb when pressing a start button, and that it turns off when pressing the stop button. Before making the ladder diagram, you should always consider the type of state that the inputs will have, for this case I will consider the start button as normally open and the stop button as normally closed. I am going to assume that the start button will be connected to input I2 and the stop button to input I6 of the PLC, for the bulb, I will also assume that it will be connected to output Q1. This would be the ladder diagram for this example, coil M1 and contacts M1 are memories, which are internal variables. The operation is as follows. When powering up the PLC or starting the simulation, each button will immediately send a signal to its respective input, depending on the state they are in. In this case, the stop button sends a logic 1 to its respective I6 contact, causing it to change state, that is, it is activated. So these would be the initial conditions of the process without having manipulated any physical input. If we press the start button, it sends a high voltage level to the PLC input I2, which translates into a logical 1, thus activating the I2 contact. When the contacts I2 and I6 are active, then the coil M1 is also activated. The M1 coil sends a logical 1 to its respective contacts, thus interlocking the coil and activating the Q1 coil, which sends a signal to turn on the light bulb. If the start button is released, it would see a logical zero to contact I2, causing it to return to its default state, that is, it will deactivate or open. But the coil M1 will remain active since its contact M1 is active thanks to the self-holding or latching that is generated. To turn off the bulb, it is only necessary to deactivate the M1 coil for an instant and thus de-energize the latch, and this is achieved by pressing the stop button, since it sends a logical zero to the I6 contact, causing it to return to its normal state. By default it is normally open. Then, if the button is released, it will send a logical 1 and activate contact I6 again, reaching the entire process to the initial conditions. But we already know that this whole process is carried out almost at the same instant. If we wish to consider the stop button as normally open, then its contact in the ladder diagram will have to be normally closed, so that when the PLC is powered up or the simulation is started, it is already active. Since those are the initial conditions that this process must have.